reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven like the sound of rushing water, a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of the harpists playing their harps. They were singing what seemed to be a new hymn before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn this hymn except the 144,000 who had been ransomed from the, the earth. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They have been ransomed as the first fruits of the human race for God and Lamb. On their lips no deceit had been found. They were unblemished. Verbum Domini. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The lords of the earth in its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it, for he founded upon the seas and established upon the, upon the rivers. Who can ascend the mountains of the Lord, or, the, or who may stand in his holy place? He whose, whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior, such as the race that seeks for him the seat that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Stay away, for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Dominos Rebiscum, Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Lucum. When Jesus looked up, he saw some wealthy people putting their offerings into the treasury. And he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest. For those others have all made offerings from their surplus wealth. But she from her poverty has offered her whole livelihood. Verbum Domini. My brothers and sisters in Christ, today is the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the presentation of Mary in the temple. The Byzantine liturgy proclaims today is the prelude to God's munificence and the announcement of salvation in the temple of God. The Virgin is seen openly foretelling to all the coming of Christ. The most pure temple of the Savior is most precious bridal chamber. The Virgin, sacred treasury of God's glory, enters today into the house of the Lord bringing with her the grace of this divine spirit. Wherefore the angels of God are singing, Behold the heavenly tabernacle. Wherefore let us cry out to her with all our strength, joy to her fulfillment of the creature's plan. Let us ask Mary present in the temple to take our poor offering into her maternal hands, to purify and complete it by her offering, so pure, so perfect, to include and hide it in hers so great and so generous. This is Father Gabriel of St. Mary Magdalene, uh, OCD. These are the words of his uh, talking about the Byzantine liturgy. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the widow, the poor widow, uh, has offered her whole livelihood. And this scripture passage always makes me think about Trusting in Jesus. Do we truly trust in Jesus? And I would dare say that if we have not given out of our need, in other words, given to others what we really need ourselves, putting others before our needs, other needs before our needs, can we really say that we've trusted Jesus, that we've trusted in uh, our Father in heaven? 
right? And I, I dare say that in my lifetime, there's been maybe a couple of times. I remember when I owned my restaurant and I was living week to week. There was no doubt about it. And I still try to uh, uh, give uh, more than I could afford to the church. And uh, I, I really do believe those were times where I felt close to Jesus. Not because uh, that's not the reason why I gave more than I could afford to the church. But because I gave more than I could afford to the church, I felt closer to Jesus. I felt his closeness. Uh, but for the most part in my life, and I think that just about every single one of us give out of our excess. We don't give out of our need. And I think that this is a great contemplation for all of us. To what extent do we really trust in Jesus? So if we had a $20 bill, and that's all we had, the $20 bill was the difference between us being homeless and not being able to eat dinner. And somebody came and surely was obviously worse off than us would we give them that money, the last $20. I would say that there's a better chance that we'd give them our last 20 than if we had more than enough to sustain us. Because wealth is addictive. Wealth is addictive. I used to tell my son, uh, all the time and this is really at one time I owned two cars I owned two houses I owned a restaurant uh, I had a lot of money I had a lot of money and then a set of circumstances uh, caused me to basically live as I said uh, week to week uh, week to week I was actually my expenses were definitely more than what uh, I was bringing in and I'd have to say that my net assets were minimal actually I, sh I owed far more than I was worth uh, and I used to tell my son that you know when you have a lot of money you worry about your money and when you have no money at all other people worry that you have no money right and the other people who worry that you have no money are the people who you owe money to, right? Um, it's, it's a very, very interesting phenomenon. Um, and uh, it definitely gives you a different viewpoint of life. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, I think that this gospel passage on this, the uh, first day of the week, the last week of ordinary time. Remember, this coming Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. Uh, that this is in keeping with what I said yesterday. Are we preparing for the season of preparation? Advent is the season of preparation for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so this week... We should be thinking about how we're going to better immerse ourselves into Advent. How we're going to make the most of Advent. Penance, contrition, repentance, reparation. Uh, these types of things, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And the reason why I say that this is uh, the mind of the church is because of the Alleluia Chorus that says, Stay awake, for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. Right? So the church is reminding us all right, to pay attention, to be aware uh, that we should be mindful of preparing for the coming of our Lord, staying awake. And so I think that that is a great reflection for us. On this feast day of the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the temple, uh, and I'm, I'm understanding that this is the memorial or the feast of that Mary was presented as a virgin, as a perpetual virgin, uh, and that indeed uh, she would then become uh, the uh, professed mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But Mary is the model of trusting in Jesus. Mary is the model of putting complete faith and trust in Jesus. 
and not worry about anything else other than obedience to Jesus. And I think so this is, I really think, a great reflection for us, trusting in Jesus, desiring, resolving, intending to be completely obedient to Jesus, trying to detach from all earthly things and giving everything to Jesus, which of course everything belongs to Jesus because it's only in his mercy that we have anything. Let us now ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs for the Catholic Church, for the Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, for our seminary study, for the priest, and for those discerning religious life, for mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, and everybody in their vocation,